All right, before we get started, Barry, full disclosure to our viewers, we go way, 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 way back. My 20s, early 20s. Way, way yeah. back, since I was on the radio at 106 right. KMEL. Right. So nice. I, I've known you since long before I, I got with the Giants. So let's be friends like we really are, our people. Okay. <laughs> this is real talk right yeah, here. Real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is really full circle for me here today, and there's so much to cover, but so little time. So... You've had such a remarkable career. Let's just start at the very beginning, growing up in the Bay Area in San Carlos. And uh, growing up, obviously, everybody knows your late father was a fantastic major leaguer, your godfather, Willie Mays. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about being a little boy growing up with major leaguers in your family and in your life like that. Well, when my dad's in, it was difficult because my dad's wanted you to be perfect. You know, my dad was always like, you would always never, like, do enough because I guess, you know, you have... my. It's like when I have kids now, too. Yeah. So you have three kids. My dad was push, 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 push. I went to that direction. Like, it drove me. Okay. You know, some people would, wouldn't. Would go the other would direction. go the other direction. That's right. My brother, so my brother went this way. I went this way. Okay. My sister went this way. Okay. And um, that always, that made me want it. Willie was the type, when I was a little boy, the huggy, lovey one out there going, you're great. I love you. I'm this. So I have both sides between those two. Okay. But I grew up in a great community. You yeah. know, that's the key. It, I, I don't think my dad and Willie, yes, they were a huge part of it. Don't get it. But as a kid, you have your friends. So what if I, you wanted me to go back, I was grateful for Willie and my dad, but I was even probably more grateful for my friends. I grew up in an athletic community. Mm -hmm. I mean, all we did was play basketball, football, baseball, and every single one of my friends, that's all we did. And you we excelled would, at, at all of those sports, but w was baseball always your dream to follow in the footsteps of your dad and, and Willie? Not at first. Really? No, it was just to ride my big wheel <laughs> down the hill, skateboard. I played hockey. Just we used to ice kid. skate every Friday. You know what I mean? A Belmont oh. ice skating ring. Wow. When I was a little kid, we used to just cardboard slide down the hill, and I wanted to be like this the number one best cardboard slider. We used to rope swing off the cliffs, which crazy nowadays, but you had the downhill and we used to tie ropes up on the on these trees and swing off and see how far we could swing and come wow. back. Um, I grew up with around a bunch of kids that were, we water skied, we skied, we ice skated, we big wheeled, we skateboarded. We did so many different things. It's like I try to say, I've dibbled a dab a lot in everything uh -huh. in my, in sports. Like I said, I'm okay and respectful in any sport. Right. right. I was just only really talented in one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. By the way, I would pay to see a picture of you ice skating. I would love to see hey, that. Hey, I, I did pretty good because um, Alan Thick, you know, before he passed away sure. and Robin Thick, we used to take all the kids and play hockey down in L.A. And we used to, he used to, I didn't do it. He um, rented the whole ice skating ring, and we beat him. Me and my son and nice. stuff played hockey. We beat him. He goes, you don't play hockey. And I said, matter of fact, I have some hockey skates in my garage, so let me just go pull out my old pair, <laughs> and we'll go do that. And so we had fun, yeah. I so you hockey. actually were really able to have pretty much a normal childhood, really, in spite of the legacy that you came from. The Bay Area, yes. I, I was grateful in my, in my community. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a really good time in my community. We... It's hard to explain right now. I mean, I don't think it's really hard for people to, to grasp it because I think we all grew up in the same kind of communities of different eras, of different areas. You know, some in Oakland, some in Richmond, some in San Carlos, you know, Palo Alto, et cetera, so on. Um, but I, I had great friends. I mean, really good friends, good teachers in my school. It was just a sport environment. I yeah. mean, that's all we did as kids. You know, we were always outside playing Riding, I mean, I even rode a bike for a little while. I'm, I'm into bikes now. I know like you on are. road bikes. Yeah. But I, I used to ride, like, they used to jump the bikes with their mountain bikes, kind of like, and do all the jumps. And I was a little scared of doing jumps because them <laughs> boys would jump off the cliff. i just ride in the dirt, come back, and then go home. And right. Do that stuff. You were but, smart. Yeah. <laughs> right, But right. I always believed in that you should try everything. Yeah. And are these are some of these people, these friends and teachers, still in, in your life still today? Still to this day. That's amazing. I mean, Sarah High School, Oh. I think it's... Uh, a brotherhood that never goes away. Tell me what is so unique and special about Sarah, because as we know, so many professional mm -hmm. athletes have come out of that high school. What is it about that program that lifts you guys to these professional heights? It's a brotherhood. It's hard to explain, Renal. I mean, it's a brotherhood that just never dies. I mean, 
Kevin Donahue was my basketball coach, and he also was the athletic department head of athletic department. And I mean, we still talk to this day, you know, Bob McKercher, Tom Paraback, you know, Rob Larry. We, we still talk about the days back in there when we used to have to, just like in basketball or football, we used to have basketball back in the day, well, baseball back in the day, sorry about that. But baseball, we had to put the nets in between the basketball hoops because we had to build them ourselves because we didn't this. have those things. I love then, this. Right? So we used to build them ourselves <laughs> back there. And, you know, all our parents were always there, you know. And most of us that went to Sarah also played Little League Baseball together yeah. in St. Carlos and Belmont. Yeah. You know, we played against all the guys from Palo Alto, Kenny Williams, who was in the major leagues and then GM, you yeah, know, for the White, the White Sox. Sox. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can go on and on. I mean, we all went to camp together in sixth grade over to Jones Gulch way up there by um, Half Moon Bay on the top of 92. That's where I met most of my friends from St. Francis. Wow. You know, so all of that is a brotherhood. And yeah. then all, most of us either went to Sarah St. Francis, Bellarmine, you know, and yeah. we went to all boys schools. And um, and that was like lightning in a bottle in that era too. That was a special time then too. It was just fun. Yeah. I mean, it's a brotherhood at Sarah. I mean, it's a unity that never dies. Yeah, yeah, we'll get back to Sarah in a moment, but I, I do want to talk about your mom um, and, and you particularly as a little leaguer because your dad was always working. So uh -huh. you've always talked about the influence that your mom has had on you and her strength. Yeah. Talk a little bit about Miss Pat for me, please. Well, my mom was the backbone that kept everybody together. I mean, everybody knows my dad played baseball. You know, my dad had a little bit of a drinking problem at those times and stuff. So my mom kind of like, my mom was always at the Little League games. She was always like in the, um, the snack, snack bar. bars yeah. and <laughs> stuff like that. She always drove us. Um, but my mom wa was, was fun because I remember as, it, right now, even at times when we, we were growing up and my dad, you know, my dad used to tell us, I always watch your games, but I used to sit on top of the hill so, he didn't, you know, he wouldn't get bothered by everybody. Right, right. But for us, it was like, well, dad, we, want, we didn't know you were there. We wanted you down here. And my mom would always say, your dad was there. Yeah. He was there. Yeah. You know, he always watched you guys. So my mom always reinsured that value of your dad's there. But when my dad stopped playing and stuff, and when my dad, when I started in high school, I never forget my mom. We used to, you know how you are when you're a kid. <laughs> my mom's the best mom on the planet. Because <laughs> my mom's real. Yeah. You know? She always kept it real. She oh, still keeps it real. My mom, so I remember, you know, as you get older, you're like, my mom used to have to drive us to school. We had to take the bus, right? Yeah. Because we, we went to go to Sarah. And I went to Carey School, which was right above Sarah. Okay. So my mom's driving. And sometimes, you know, your mom just ain't going to get dressed and drop you off at school and stuff like that. So my, mom, my mom's so funny. Uh -oh. It's like, Mom, you got to drop us off down the street, you know, because we want to walk into the class. You know, we don't want my mom dropping us at of the front course. door. It's not a good look. And my mom's like, <laughs> oh, boy, all the things that I do for you. So my mom would walk us into class and say, my kids do not want me to bring them to school. <laughs> we just like, come on, mom. She called you yeah, out. Yeah, that's how she is. But she's our best friend. Wow. My mom's my best friend. My mom is like, you know, if it wasn't for my mom, I think a lot of things would have went downhill for us. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it, mm -hmm. based on my mom. My mom's inner strength, um, things probably would have went different. Because my mom was the one who really was like, when I didn't want to play baseball, I didn't want to do the things my dad didn't, you know. I said, Mom, I don't want to play baseball. My mom took me to baseball practice, you know, when I was a little. Like, I didn't want to play when I was little. Really? Mm -mm. My mom's like, drove me down there. She says, you don't want to know what's going to happen at home if you don't try, right? And I hit a home run my first at bat. What a shock. <laughs> what? You know, I hit the it's ball. Shocking. I don't know if it's a home run. It's a bunch of errors because it went through all their legs. <laughs> And I just ran around the bases, <laughs> and I touched home plate. And from that time on, I told my mom I love it. Yeah. I mean, I came at home plate, and I was like, Mom, yes, I like it. Yeah, and yeah. That's what started my career, because my, mo my mom didn't ever want us to not try. Gotcha. You know, she was the one that's like, you know, if you can't deal with adversity in life, if you can't deal with the struggles to improve, or whatever it is, you ain't gonna get better. It's a huge, huge lesson to learn. That's so did mom. you not want to play baseball because of your dad and your godfather? Did you want to forge your own path or it just didn't interest you when you were little? It just really, I was good at it. 
and it was something that I was already good at. And oh. so I just wanted to do something else. It wasn't challenging it wasn't, enough yeah, for you. Yeah, it was like, okay, I can hit the ball really far. I was okay. a little kid. Okay. I can catch. They always want me at first base to catch. So I catch all the balls and I played shortstop. And I'm like, okay, I want to go ride a bike. Right. I want to learn how to do this. I want to do that. So I think just as a kid, that's just natural. It wasn't challenging enough. Did it become challenging when you got to Sarah? Is that when it started to kind of click in for you? Sarah's when I realized how talented I got at baseball. Mm. When I was in Little League, we, I just was having fun. Right. You know, when I got to high school, Dave Stevens was our coach, my, my coach then, and Bob, the game started to change a little bit. I started to really like it. And then I started to understand why do I see things differently from my friends? And I'm like, I just tell my buddy Bob, we played Sacred Heart, and I go, Bob McCurtry's home. I'm gonna hit two home runs off this guy, watch, because he always does the same thing. But I didn't understand it then. Right. I hit two home runs. Right, right. You know, Bob's like, really? <laughs> I, I, I just start to, it, things just start to literally click in my head when yeah. I got into high school. But I didn't understand what. And then by the time college came, my dad, I wanted, I got drafted by the Giants when I was in high school. Right. But my mind, I don't know if it's God or whatever, but there's this path that said, I'm not ready. I'm going to college. I just wanted to go to that next phase. And Willie's like, you going to college. You going to college. And my dad's like, you going to make whatever decision you want to make. And my mom's like, well, you better learn how to manage your money. You know, my, you know, so everybody's like, <laughs> everybody was giving you different messages. Different at right, that time. right. So then, but all good advice from all three of them, all really. great advice. Yeah. But I always wanted to be a giant now. This was the key. Willie was my godfather. Sure. I wanted to play left field. I wanted to be in the same outfit with my dad and Willie. Sure. So the Giants drafted me. Right, but it didn't work out. I wasn't ready. You weren't to ready. To me, I just wasn't ready. Gotcha. I felt that there was something in my head that was just doing this about baseball. Mm -hmm. And there was, I don't know, it's like I needed that class, like you're going for your master's degree in school. Next level. And I wanted to go to the best baseball school at the time, which Arizona State was at the right, time. Right, right. And I was like, if, well, if I can pass this class, then I can keep going up, keep going up. So I took those baby steps, and those baby steps worked out for me. It, it most certainly did. And w something that I think we all admire about you is how you really, even at a young age, you didn't realize it, but you've always been a student of the game. Yeah. You've always paid attention, and you've learned, and you've watched, and you had naturally, uh, you had natural ability. You were naturally gifted. Mm -hmm. but it was also important for you to study the game. You know, Renal, I it's hard because the interviews I'm really bad at. <laughs> so I, I've, my daughter, I'm introverted private person, you know, and everyone, you know, I've decided to just tell my story. You know, I don't really not say it anymore. You know, I don't hide behind it. I don't read well, I just don't. I can look at a picture, I'm monkey see, monkey do. If you show me how to fix this and put this chair together, I can focus in on it, I can do it, and I'm going to do it better than you. Yeah. Or I'm going to practice it to a T until I am better than you. Yeah. This is how my mind works. Yeah. I've always been like a loner type person. You know, My kids are helping me a lot to get out. Like, Dad, no one knows you. Everyone, they write all these things about you. They say everything about you, and you make zero comments. And they're like, what do I want to say to them? I, I don't understand. I, I'm, right now, I have an IQ in baseball that is literally off the chart. Off the charts. And I know that. I'm not going to hide behind it anymore. I'm not going to, here, what do you think? What do you think I think? I already know <laughs> what I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm that person. I have people and friends of mine that work on computers and stuff. And they're, I mean, they're geniuses yeah. with these things. Sure. But they don't have the social skills. And I was one of those people. I have an IQ for sports and baseball. And I can tell you a thousand stories. And I can teach your kids. And I can get with them. And I can make them improve. And I can do these wonderful things. Yeah. But then when you tell me, Barry, I want you to go talk to all, do this and do that. I'm like, I can't do that. Yeah. I'm, I go the other direction. I because it. I'm introverted into this loner. And I, so I'm trying to be open and honest about who I am. And I've known you since I was in my 20s. Yeah. 
Have you ever seen me out doing crazy stuff in your lifetime? I have not. <laughs> That's my point. Have you? <laughs> I have not. Have, have you ever seen me just, I go into my things and I go that way. That's what I've observed. Yeah, I yes. do this thing and I go this way. Yes. And it's not, it's not because I don't want to be there. It's just that I'm overwhelmed by something I'm not overly great at or I'm not good at. And so like the same people with the computer guy said, I go, you guys, he goes, well, but he's not social. He doesn't talk. I said, you, this is who he is. You're trying to be a friend with someone who doesn't do that. Right. You know, and so when you explain, when I try to explain to people and they, they talk to me about sports or baseball, well, it's not sports because I only know baseball. I mean, I know about other sports, but I know baseball. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like when you go over to, I go over to my friend and I ask him about a computer. And I say, well, how did you get to do this? And he looks at me like I done lost my mind. Do you know what I mean? Like, how could you not know? It's so simple. Just go boop, boop, alt, T, this, this. And I'm going, <laughs> this sounds so complicated. But now I'm the same character in baseball. I got you. And interviewing, when you're asking me, well, how do you think this? I'm going, swing the bat. I mean, my brain. I got it. So I'm trying to. I got be it. that person to where, so I'm trying to express myself, let the world know who I really am. Yeah. And then at the same time, try to be more open and, and more engaging. And so it's going to take a little time, but sure. I'm trying. And, it, and it's much appreciated. And you know what is also so important about it is the young kids and the young athletes that look up to you that might feel the same as you, mm -hmm. that feel that they have really great skills and knowledge as an athlete mm -hmm. but don't excel in other areas yeah. but you can still be successful so it's exactly. so important for you to share that for them I mean yes. so we got kids watching now that that probably really speaks to and resonates yeah. for so mm -hmm. I appreciate you being being yeah. open with us it's about just that. unfortunate I played as uh, uh, I had a job and a career that millions of people were watching yeah and I didn't know how to respond to yeah. it I felt that okay I'm not good at talking so let me, that's out of the game so I'm going to show them on the field because that's the one thing I could do. Yeah. So I thought just being quiet was because I wasn't talented at talking about anything. I'm going to just gain your respect and love by just performing it. And let your work speak, and for, speak itself for itself on itself. the field. And yeah. that's what I did. And, and, that's, oh, and that's totally okay. Yeah, that's but it backfired totally on me a little bit well, now, but so I was like, hey. You know what? That's life. Stuff yeah, happens. Yeah, that's it. And, and, and as we always say, baseball is a metaphor for life, and you learn through baseball to, to fight through adversity. Right. Because baseball is basically, I love how it's a game of failures, just right. like life is. Right. And you could have a bad day at the plate one day, and the next day you got to shake that sucker off. You're yes, playing 162 you games a year. so And me working in baseball these last 19 years has taught me, you know, how to approach my life in a different way because right. it really is a metaphor for life. Right. You're always going to get knocked down. But the important thing is, you know, do you have the character to come back right. and battle back the next day? Right. And you, you've shown that throughout your career. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Let's go to uh, Pittsburgh drafting you. Let's go to the Pirates. <laughs> 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 Let's talk about that. You drafted six overall in 1985, mm -hmm. um, and you made your MLB debut May 30th, 1986. What do you remember about that day? Anything? Were 0 for present? 5. I think I struck <laughs> out three times. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that, right? You got to uh, bounce right back from that. Yes, and I went into the clubhouse. I didn't make a big stink of it. I went down the hallway, and I cried like a little baby. Did you really? I called my dad up, and I said, I'm not ready. Oh, man. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, I'm not ready. And he said, did the ball change in size? I said, no. He said, did the pitch seem any faster than it was before you played, came here? He said, no. He says, then what are you not ready about? I sat there and thought about that for a minute. I said, maybe it just could have been a bad day. But I said, Dad, it's just like my knees were going like this, but I'm the only one who felt them. No one saw them but me, and I felt like I was, and I couldn't stop shaking in my hands, and I was like, everything I ever worked for is what I wanted. Yeah. But then at the same time, I couldn't stop doing this inside. I'm yeah. going, what the hell is going on? You've done this a thousand times. Yeah. And then the second day, I went three for See, I got over it quick. This is what we're saying, right? Exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. 
yeah. <laughs> I got over it quick. Yeah, and <laughs> what a great career you had in Pittsburgh. And one of the great baseball guys, in my opinion, of all time is Jim Leland. The best. Please tell me about playing for him. Probably the best manager I ever played for in my life. Really? Best friend, like a dad, but at the same time a mentor. Jury judge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything you can think he of for Jim everything. Leland, yeah. he was everything. You know, the reason why we had such a great relationship right now was because Leland had a different respect for his players. Um, he, he, I don't know, he loved me. I mean, you could, there was a relationship that we had. I know everyone goes off that screaming thing that he, we had in spring training, but that didn't have anything to, he did the right thing. And I, I, I tell everybody, He's our manager. He did the right thing. I didn't have anything to do with it. I just got caught in the middle of a crossfire. Yeah. You know, the Bill Verdon was just at me about something that happened. And I was like, I don't even know what he's talking about. But then he's yelling at me. And I'm right. going, dude, you're not going to yell at me for nothing. I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. And then Leland jumped in and protected his coach like he's supposed to. Punish me, whatever. But no one knows the other half of that story, you know, because no one ever hears that. Exactly. When I got called in the office and, and Leland said it was an unfortunate thing that that happened. And it was very unfortunate that they caught it on tape. And yeah, Barry, you're going to take a little bit of whatever's going to happen, though, but we're going to get through this together. And to have your manager just say that to you as a person was special to me. Because no one would, none of them, most wouldn't say anything. Yeah, that was huge. You know, you just deal with the problems. He says, don't worry about it. We're, we're going to get through this together. Yeah. And, um, he treated us like, like men, not like boys, like real adult athletes that were learning. But at the same time, he respected us as adults. Mm -hmm. Not, oh, hey, kid, you're just in the major leagues. You know, like some of these guys go, hey, kid, I could never do that to a baseball <laughs> player. I just, oh, man. I just, it wouldn't even sound right coming out of No. I'd be like, what's up, dog? But, you know, right, something like right, that. Right. And um, he believed in, I never forget, like, you know, he didn't, he didn't care, like, if you stretched. He didn't care what you did before the game. He didn't care about any of that. He just said, prepare yourself mm. at 7.30, 1.30. He made things easy, like, seem easy. Yeah. So one time he comes to spring training. I don't even know if he remembers this. <laughs> but we're all sitting there. And he goes, all right. I want all you guys to tell me we have 162 games. I want everyone, we're going to take 62 games off. Okay? You guys pick 62 days you want off. Now, you got a whole team going like this. This is a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something's not right Because it right sounds here. like a trick sounds question. Sounds like a trick question, right? He says, so before you guys say anything, you can write it down. You take whatever you do, whatever. And we're thinking... This is weird. 62 days off, man. I'm going to go to Tahiti. I'm going to be gone. You know, like, don't show up. He says, don't even show up. But you owe me 100. Okay. But then when you calculate that, you're like, if we win 100 games, we're going to be in the playoffs right. like every year. Right. right. So he, he simplified it things like it was really simple. If we were losing by like nine or eight runs in the fifth inning, because back in those days, we could leave. You didn't have to stay at the ballpark. Okay. So, you know, so when I played, right. you, didn't have to, you didn't have to stay at the ballpark. Leland believed in off days with his main players. So I was one of them. Andy Van Slyke was one. Bobby Bow, you know, the, star, the, 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 the starting players. If he gave you an off day, he allowed you to pick it. So mostly you pick that night game to a day game, wait till night so your body can fully exactly. recover. Exactly. But on an off day, he says, you're not pinch hitting. You better go, you better sit in this whirlpool. You better get all the massages you want. You better do all the, off this was off to him. It means an off day. Off day for recovery. He believed in like not killing you to just win one game. Yeah. He didn't believe I got a chance to 10 days in a row with this guy strong. I'm not going to kill him for a day. He didn't believe in exerting his pitcher. Like if something happened in the one game, we're out by eight or some runs. He just pulled us all out and said, go home. You guys are playing. I don't care if it's 20 runs after this, but I'm not going to sacrifice everyone for one day to win a World Series or to win the next game or to win the next five games. So he just simplified things. Genius. That was genius. Yeah.
Oh my goodness. You yeah. mentioned Bobby Bo, Bobby Bonilla, your boy. My best friend Talk in baseball. Talk to me about your best friend in baseball. I met, I hit three home runs in Durham in the minor leagues. I met Bobby Bo that way. He banged on the door and I was with my buddy Chip, my roommate Chip, and just still my best buddy too. <laughs> and I go, dude, there's this big, huge dude outside our window <laughs> and banging on the door. <laughs> and Chip looks and he goes, yeah, who is it? And then he goes, Bobby Bonilla. And I, well, he opened up the door and he says, who's this guy who hit three home runs in Durham? I said, me, you know, as I, you know, I'm like, <laughs> me, because Bobby's a big boy, right. you know? And um, we became friends. He said, I'd like to not meet you and stuff. And we became friends. And Bobby Bo is the one who taught me the game of baseball right. um, in the minor leagues, yeah. Okay. Because in college, you can do anything right now. Mm -hmm. I could, we could be up by 10 runs. You could still bunt and get on first base. I didn't know the, the, the professional rules. Gotcha. So we were in um, one of the minor league trips. I can't even remember exactly where. And we were up like six to one or eight to one in the sixth inning or something. So they're playing back. I drag bunt it, got to first base. And the manager on their side is just screaming. But I didn't think he was screaming at me. I don't know what he's screaming at. Maybe his pitcher, get in, do whatever, you know, because I didn't really pay attention to that. <laughs> so I came to the dugout. <laughs> Bobby Bo came up to me and he goes, he grabbed me and said, come here, kid. <laughs> he says, I, <clears throat> what's going to happen next? Don't do anything. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He says, trust me. Just what's going to happen next, just don't do nothing. Oh. I said, okay. So I get in the batter's box. <laughs> I go like this and that ball hits me uh, right here. Yes. I got it. I understood that real quick. Went down to first base. Well, really, then I ran. I got to first base. I stood there. I, I looked in the dugout to Bobby Bow, and I said, like, thank you, bro. He had I your I got back. it. Because it's like, you don't bunt he had your with back. that big of a run lead. Yeah. And I didn't understand those rules then. So Bobby Bow taught me a lot of rules about Major League Baseball, what you should and shouldn't do. Wow. I didn't realize he was such a yeah. mentor to you in that oh, way. Huge. And his son's my godson. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so 1993, you leave Pittsburgh, you come home, finally. Larry Bear, Peter McGowan call you and, mm -hmm. and say it's time for you to come and, and wear the orange and black like your dad and your, mm -hmm. your godfather and your dad's going to be your hitting coach, mm -hmm. Dusty's going to be your manager. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. That, that was the greatest day of my life. Really? Because the Yankees was in it and the other teams were in it too. And... When the Giants came, there was just a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. I mean, to have the second chance to go back home, I mean, I had the first chance in high school. Didn't think it was going to happen. I was probably would have ended up going to New York at the time. And they came, there was just a no-brainer. Yeah. I mean, it was, they, they could have just said anything at that time. I was going home. There was, that's where I always wanted to be. Sure. That's where my dream of life was supposed to be. And nothing was going to stop that. By the time they said, would you like to come home? I was already like, <laughs> y'all ain't sent me a first class ticket already. <laughs> you don't have to ask me that question twice. Did you feel like the timing was right? Do you feel like everything up to that point led you to this moment and that the timing was right for you to come home at that point? Perfect. Yeah. Because my IQ was here. I already went to and got my master's degree. So I went through the training of school and through Pittsburgh. So, to me, I'm the Harvard professor in my sport. And I went through the classes of courses, and by the time I was in San Francisco, I was already the instructor. Yeah, yeah. I already knew it. I knew everything. I remember Peter McGowan was so nervous over the deal, because I was, um, I think it was a meetings, owner's meetings, or whatever it was, I was stuck in a hotel for two days, with, and I couldn't leave because it, they didn't own the team at the time. So they're like, oh, yes. they were trying to announce all this and they're like, well, you can't leave. And I'm like, I'm hungry. <laughs> and this is when I think at the same time, the bodyguard was out with Whitney Houston okay, or something. I sure. wanted to go see the movie. <laughs> like, you can't even go see the movie. I'm like, I can't sit here two days. I had one suit. I didn't have to bring a change of clothes because I was supposed to just go in and come out. You were like sequestered. Basically. I was taking a shower like every hour so I don't dirty my clothes up. Oh now that's what God. I was doing. This is amazing. <laughs> and so Peter and them were, you know, worried about getting the team at the time. And then 
Peter, you know, and also nervous when you sign someone with a big contract. Yeah. I mean, it's a big deal for anyone. And, and, and that was and the biggest in pressure. baseball history at that time, too. Yeah, that was a, the biggie. It's a lot of pressure. Sure. But I was already there mentally. Yeah. And I was already there in my IQ vision. Yeah. And I remember Peter McGowan says, how good are you? I said, Peter, <laughs> if, if, <laughs> if I fail you, I'll give you a million dollars back to whatever charity you want. That's how confident I was and how happy I was to go yeah. home. That I was willing to sacrifice anything yeah. to prove to the town that I grew up in, the boys I played with, all of my coaches that I've had there, all my dad, my godfather. I had so much weight on me, but at the same time relief to now I'm prepared. I went through the battles in Pittsburgh. I had a great manager to teach me. I had a great outfield coach to teach me. I had great mentors of instructors mm -hmm. to now qualify me as an instructor. So when I, the time I got to San Francisco, it was pretty simple. Yeah, man. And then from there, it was just skyrocketing. Just, I mean, you were so good, you would break your own records. That's, you know you're bad if you break your own records, in addition to some MLB records. But let's go to 1996, which uh, was your 40-40 season. You're mm -hmm. the first National League player to do that. Mm -hmm. And then in the following year, you tied your dad for the most 30-30 seasons. What, yeah. what was that like? How, how did you and your dad share that moment in history together? What'd your dad say? <laughs> well, <laughs> my dad was really happy. I mean, when, when my dad and I finally got together, because my dad and I relationship wasn't as close at the time okay. until I came home. Okay. And when I came home, well, even when I was in college, we were, we were, it was building even better because my dad was my instructor. Um, but then my dad, when my dad got there, the bond even just got better because my dad's IQ was as good as my yeah. IQ. And my dad was a genius to hitting. You know, he partied and did his own thing, but when it came to it, he had the vision. He just never utilized it to his best. But 30-30, I knew I could do that. Yeah. And I knew I could do it more. But my dad always challenged me. My dad was always like, you got to hit 35 times. I said, I'm looking at myself going, okay, that's not going to be difficult to do. <laughs> I mean, I can do that. Um, I wanted to get the more than that. I wanted to do it six times or seven times, though, but... Everything that my father did was important to me to do. Everything that my godfather did was important for me to do. And it wasn't important for me to do it in a sense of that I need just to try to just, because I knew I had it. I knew I had the vision. I knew I had the talent. Just to say I was a good baseball player. You know, like my godfather was everything to me. Like yeah. for him to sit there and say, just godson, being the, you know, center fielder, greatest baseball player I've seen in my lifetime. Like, just to say, you know what, kid, you did okay. You were you were good. Because when I was little, Willie would throw the balls in the infield, and I couldn't reach. You know, I was like five, six years old, and running and trying to throw the ball. And he's like, how are you going to be good if you can't reach second base? And I'm like, so my whole mindset was like, I just want you to love me, and I want you to like me. I want yeah. you to think that I'm great, yeah. you know? And so, you know, people think that I had pressures from other, but no. The pressure for me was just their acceptance from my father and Willie. I remember you saying that at the uh, the the plaque dedication, how as you always just wanted the approval of your dad and your godfather as a baseball player. That's it. Nothing else ever mattered. And you got that. I got that. I knew I had the fans were my fans. That was my family. I grew up in the Bay Area. Yeah. So entertaining them was it was my pressure was to keep the family tradition alive. Keep the thrill for the family. The family business. Yep. But the Bay Area. Yeah. I took pride in that. I took pride when Joe Montana and the 49ers win. I take pride now that the Warriors are winning. Yeah. I took pride in the Bay Area because I grew up in a great loving community. Yeah. It wasn't the fact of anything else. And I didn't want anyone to walk in our house with my family and disrespect us you done lost your mind i know that. I'm I, like, uh -uh. I know that was not we, gonna happen no i'm like <laughs> we can't do this we got to keep going but you know hey i did the best i could uh, you did all right you did all right all right let's move to the the new ballpark pack bell park in 2000 mm -hmm. and um what was it like opening that new ballpark being a part of that majesty and all that pomp and circumstance how did that feel for your family in the bay area that you were entertaining in this new beautiful ballpark what to was to get that away like? from candlestick was heaven oh my god that was you know if you really want to know the truth come on was just getting away from that candlestick ballpark they could have built a <laughs> 
toilet anywhere else and we would have been happier. And it was just because for us to have 30,000 people at Candlestick seemed like there was 12. Yeah. You know what I mean? I so know. that I was environment there. I was out really there, good. yeah. When they put this stadium there, when we had a chance to hit off the roof when they first started it and just to actually see the view and then when we walked the stadium, they had us all walk the stadium oh. and just the views of what, the appreciation of just the city itself and we were just walking around, wow, this is gorgeous. You can sit even upper deck here. You can see so much of the city here. You can sit here, you can do this. We were like, this is, this is heaven. And I we was nervous about that tall wall in right field. I was a little bit nervous just about really? that tall wall. Yeah, really? I was really nervous about that. Cause I'm like, why are you guys have a little fence over here? <laughs> and then you sign me and you put a big <laughs> tall wall over here and you want me. And then their whole thing was, well, this is only 309, but that wall, 309, bring the fence down and I could just go boop, 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 boop. You know, that's what I was thinking at the time. And if it wasn't for my dad, you know, and then I wouldn't have figured that wall out. Is that right? My dad said, you hit it through it. You hit through the wall, it'll go over the wall. Anytime you try to climb the hill, you're going to mess up. Just hit it. Pretend it's not there. And then, and once I hit the first one, it was... Are you good? I was good. Yeah. Was good. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out. <laughs> yeah, you, you did all right. You did all right. All right, so 2001 was a remarkable mm -hmm. and an emotional season uh, mm -hmm. most notably you you set the single season home run record mm -hmm. um your dad said that watching you take that journey to, mm -hmm. to tying and breaking that record he said that was the most relaxed he had ever seen you mm -hmm. what made you so relaxed with did you just block out all the external media and pressure and chatter and everything how were you so relaxed during one of the biggest moments in your career it started during the off season because I train all the time. I mean, that's what I live for. I train, I work out all the time. Your dad said you would work out in the winter to the point that you would have tears in your eyes. You yeah. worked out so hard. It's yeah. amazing. It's, it, I figured something out in the batting cage that I never, well, you know, you're always trying to piece something together. Yeah. And I'm always trying to put this puzzle together all the time. And in off season, I'm hitting and I'm just swinging my dad and I'm going through this process. And all of a sudden, I'm figuring something out and it just clicked. And I'm like, wait a minute, do I walk away? Cause that's what I do, leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Come back, can I repeat it? Cause that's my dad's thing all the time. If you can't repeat what you did again, then we still have work to do. I mastered practice, Rennell. Yeah. Um, and I try to explain it to the guys nowadays is that I mastered practice. And I know it sounds crazy. Practice. You know, practice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. AI, and AI is my favorite basketball. Don't, AI, I love him. Don't even go there. You guys edit this. I'm going to, I swear to God. We got you. There, okay? We got you. You're um, talking about practice? Yeah. But I'm talking about my own personal practice, not team practice, but just my personal practice. I, um, you know, you have a guy that throws batting practice to you every single day. And these are the things my dad installed into me all the time. And you know what's coming all the time to do this. And you don't, you're not per perfect with him. Right. And so I'm like, that's true. So my dad said, if you can't be good at this, how are you going to be good at that? And that dude's going to put a wrinkle in it. Or he's going to do this. Or he's trying to change things. He's trying to move things. Beat him, focus on the things you need to do, practice the things you don't do well, and then it'll start. From, all of a sudden, that moment, it clicked. I got to spring training, you know, and I could not believe the way I could move this ball anywhere I wanted to at any time and do something. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And then I didn't want to get too big headed and go, I got this. I'm like, you know, my dad always says when it's going really good, that window's this small. Mm -hmm. I mean, this big. You know, there's more bad times you have good times. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there thinking, wow. So I leave. I come back next day. I do it again. I'm like, I, I can just, I could really move this ball. Like all of a sudden my body, my hands, everything was just going boom, boom, boom. And then I just got hot and it just never got cold. Yeah. And that's why you were so relaxed. And again, student of the game. You, you never stopped learning. You never stopped improving yourself. No. 
which is so admirable. Now, one of the things we as fans love is the fact that you always had a flair for the dramatic. Mm -hmm. A lot of your milestone home runs were, mm -hmm. you know, set on the big stage, mm -hmm. including uh, number 71 that mm -hmm. season. And did you, did you know when you hit it? When you would hit home runs, could you feel it instantly? When you made that connection, mm -hmm. or you're like, it's, it's gone, right? Renal, my IQ is so high as I planned every home run at home. Every record home run is at home. I know! I, the only one that's not at home is 762, the last one. I right, hit. right. But I hit 714 in Oakland, and I went through, a, I was going, hitting bad. We had to go through some extra batting practice. I need to do so, and that's why I pointed at everyone, because see, I worked on something, it worked. Then I had, and Bochi threw to me like crazy for like 45 minutes when I hit 755. Yeah. The 500's at home, 600's at home, 660's yeah. at home, 661's at home. You know, because these are my people. My Entertainer. People, if you, 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 if you want to come see our house, you fly in, <laughs> buy a ticket, come to our house, watch it, or you can see it on TV. But oh. I did everything at home because yeah, you did. that was, there's, that's the love, you know? I mean, yeah. it's. I got love on the road. I know how they make it seem like, you know, I, I watched on the road. I saw when people booed me and all of a sudden it stopped and they're going, you know, with their cameras. I saw them like after I hit the home run, okay, B, yeah, yeah. you're all right, you know. I saw the love. It wasn't like, you know, it's perceived to be. I and know. I respect that. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, and I want the other towns to know, I saw you. Yeah. I, I, I love you too, yeah. you know. And it, it's, you know, just because the, you know, I was a villain or whatever, and the press made it out seem like I was the most hated person. I saw the love too, and I, I, I love those cities, but I liked it. I mean, boo me, it's great. It's a right. great stage. I mean, that's what we're there for. Right. I mean, what if I came out in, in L.A. and they were like, yay, pay <laughs> Come on. That's well, I was going to no ask sense. you if you were able to be present and, and notice the, the fan reaction and everything, and we, we would see that in, a, in opposing stadiums, watching on TV. They would boo you as you came to the plate. Mm -hmm. You'd knock it out, and they're, and they're on their feet cheering. Yeah, but I, I, had, I was crazy at that time. <laughs> because I love the dramatics for now. I liked it because I knew I was talented to, to change it. I knew I was good enough to change it. Yeah. So I walked on the fields late on purpose. I didn't do it because I was just being a dummy. I did it. There's a plan to all that. Mm -hmm. Because I could come to the ballpark and not have that vibe in my body or that feel. And I needed something to kick me up. So I'd be like, I'd go out late. And they're like, you're always late. You're this. I'm like, you're right. And then I had to back it up. See, yes. So that's the start. I'm like, oh, okay, you want to talk all that yang yang? Okay, it's yeah. on now. And yeah. then that would get me fired up. Yeah. And I get into the thing, and then I'm gonna hit it. Yeah. And then when I get it, I'm like, now what you gonna say? Yeah. And so it was good, you know. You're always good. gonna back it up. Yeah, always gonna I have back no it up. Let, let's talk about 2003. Another remarkable home run you hit. Mm -hmm. The game after you had laid your dad to rest. Mm -hmm. Can you even tell me the emotion of that moment? It, were you even present? Was it kind of out of body? I mean, what kind of emotion? Probably like that. Yeah, kind of yeah. like a whole bunch of all of that yeah. all up in one. Yeah. Um, I ended up in the hospital after that, too. I had like an irregular heartbeat at that time. I you were up stressed in the out and you didn't pay attention yeah. to it. Listen and to me just scolding you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's weird because I was with my dad every day during this cancer. And yeah. I slept by him, bathed him, cleaned him up. I did the whole process, you know, spent time. And, and... Got a lot of things out, me and my dad sat and talked about. And then all of a sudden at the game, and then when my dad passed away, and that all happened, I couldn't understand why I had that same loss feeling. You know what I mean? Because I, I think my dad and I shared everything at the time. I think the things that I didn't like about my dad, we got out. The things that my dad said he was sorry for, for all the things that went down, we got out. And I was so grateful for that, yeah. you know, that we could put a lot of things to rest. That's a blessing. Yeah. You really had closure. Yeah, because I sat down on my dad's floor and I was like, Dad, you were... Ugh. He's like, I know, but you became something out of it. So it wasn't all that bad. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, my dad said, I'm sorry. There was things, in, you know, we're all different people. We all come from different things. But I couldn't understand why I had that same loss feeling. And I think it was because I knew that I didn't have the eyes behind my head for my career anymore. Oh my goodness. And I think that was the problem. Yeah. And I think that's where that irregular heartbeat and that loss that I had was that, how am I gonna do this alone? Oh wow. Because people think I did all this by myself. Right. Like, oh, you got this great talent. Yeah, I have the talent. 
but I had eyes behind my head. I might die. I had Willie. I had them dissecting everything I did and dissecting everything on the field because we all had, were in the same classroom of, of conversation. Now it's like I'm by myself. So when you look at it and you think about this, my career went like this and it stayed right here. As soon as my dad was gone, it started to go like this. Mm. Because the things that my dad would call me on the phone and say, you're doing this. I didn't have that phone call anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I Do you totally, see what I'm saying? I got I it. I don't have that call anymore. I got anymore. it. I was the same way. I got it. And so I was just hanging on. Yeah. You know, just hanging on and going back over things that what he would say to me or I'm like, and then I, I'm going, no one's here to cuss me out. No one's here to, right. you know, no, my dad would be like, get your butt out, get your, well, he'd say ass, whatever, you know, came out of his mouth at that time, <laughs> <laughs> you know, dude, and I'm, I'm trying to live that person and. You know, when my dad passed away after 2003, 2004, I played really well. Mm -hmm. 2005, I got hurt. Yeah. 2006 came. I was hanging on 2007. I wanted to play 2008 and end it. Yeah. Didn't have the chance, but um, it was just slowly doing this because I didn't have, I, I was alone. I, so people don't understand, understand. I was never alone in my career. Of course. I right. always had my dad. Right. I got you. And you don't leave your wingman. No. I don't care what it is. And no. I don't didn't leave my dad. No matter how our differences were, yeah. no matter how we fought or battled things, I didn't leave my dad because my dad was a genius. Yeah. And so when my dad left, I was like, maybe I'm not as smart as I thought wow. I was. You know, all those little doubt. Yeah. yeah, I get it. And I get so it. Get it. Man. And so that's that 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 happened to me. Man. And, then, and I didn't have the desire. I was losing the drive. Sure. That's understandable you know, too. I was losing that drive yeah. in the game. Yeah. Um, and you'd already had such a lengthy career. You you'd hit the yeah. pinnacle and everything and now you you lose that significant person in your life. Yeah. I totally I totally yeah. get Noises it. Noises were bothering me that never bothered me before. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden somebody in stands goes you're doing it. I'm like, really, dude? I'm so tired of listening to you. I got to go home. I'm yeah. so exhausted. You no, know, I was like, I, I, and you, yeah. I never heard those things right, when, right. when my dad I was so focused. Isn't but. it interesting when we when we lose those key figures, how, how no. and you don't realize it in the beginning how it, how it affects you. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I totally understand that. I, I just also want to just go back to 2003 because that year you became the only member of the 500-500 club. Mm -hmm. And much is made of your hitting prowess but we don't talk a lot about you being such a prolific base stealer. Mm -hmm. So did you, you I'm, I'm assuming you studied that just mm -hmm. as hard as you studied studied hitting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, they can tell us a five to a player, but I was six, maybe six and a half. Willie says six, but I think I have a half over him now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah. And it's only because he's older and he can't see you anymore. But, oh, bless you know, his heart. You know, bless I love his him. heart. So I love you, my godfather. But, you know, it, I, um... Yeah, but I 500 500 was at icing to a cake. Yeah. Cuz I was already 400 400. Right. But they didn't make the big deal out of 400 400. But once I've already passed them yeah. and I was a 400 400 by myself, yeah. 500 500 I was just trying to put it out of reach where nobody can get of it. Of course you were. <laughs> That's all I was I love doing. that. Of course you I'm were. Like, you are not going to catch me. Oh. And I knew there was a lot of talented ball players that could catch me oh, very yeah. easily. Yeah. And I'm like, no, man, I got to keep it for my daddy. I got to keep it I for it. My Willie. I got to show them. But like I said, it goes back to making sure that they approve of what I was doing. Yeah. So everything yeah. in my brain was like, I'm not going to let you catch me. Because even you. when I was at 404, Willie was like, I got more triples than you. I got this. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me work on that one. I got to do this one. I got to do that. I <laughs> love it. It's like a, a rivalry between it's the three of you. It's a roller coaster really. ride That's my whole so career. That's so good. Yeah. That's so good. All right. Well, um, you talked about kind of losing your desire after your dad left mm -hmm. and a little bit of decline in your play. But in 2016, you ended up with the Marlins mm -hmm. as hitting coach. Yeah. I think that surprised a lot of people that you took that job. But I read that your mom really encouraged you to take My it. My mom but, did a lot. And, and tell me about getting that phone call and, and how you decided to take that job. Well, Lori called me up and asked me if I wanted to do it. And then, you know, my first reaction was, you lost your mind. <laughs> you think I'm going down there and you done lost your mind. That's why we were all surprised you did it. We're like, he's not doing that. And then I went back to these voices about my dad mm. saying, if you want to learn something, you have to get in the fire first. Get in there. You, you, if you want to teach people or give the information that you've been blessed with to bless someone else, then you get in the fire with them and you should show them. And my mom, I told my mom about it. My mom was just like, 
you, 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 I said, I want to do it for dad. You know, I kind of like, yeah. you know, what my dad taught me. You know, I want to see if I'm capable. And give back. And I said, Mom, yeah. I'm not a social person, though. I'm a, I'm a loner. I don't really talk that much. So what am I going to say to them? Just, my mom was just like, you might be better than you think, son. If you don't try, you don't know. Oh. So when I went there to coach the guys, all of them, every single one of them would tell you, they, we talk to this day. Oh. You know, and they get what I'm saying now. Okay. But when I first got there... It was a struggle. And I tried to explain it to Lori. I said, you know, this is going to take a process. I mean, I know you want to do this little one-year thing. And, and that was all I wanted, too, was just sure. to see if it was something I wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, it's not that I can't do it. It's pretty easy. But I said, you got to understand, we have, they're young players. You just, it takes time. The, just the first few months there with me to break the ice of who I am that they can't control. Mm. It's going to be hard enough as it is mm -hmm. for to get... Stanton and to Ozuna just to say any name they want to call me, coach, Barry, dummy, whatever, just to break that ice is going to take time. Yeah. You know, and then the fact that they're going to explain something to me and I'm going to giggle at half the things they say, knowing that they are not <laughs> ready at anything they're talking about. But then I had to think, I backed up and this is how I dealt with them. I, you got to treat them as adults. I sat there and I said, you know what? I can't do it this way. I got to respect them. Once they see my respect level of them yeah. and I'm not trying to be here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm already here. I don't need to show it to you. I need to understand you. I need to understand what's going on. Because baseball players, we're all professionals for now. We are professionals. There's 1,200 in the, in the league or whatever. And we're all professionals. We got here from Little League, made, you know, all the way up. They're one of like a percentage of people that are doing something. So you right. have to respect that whether you're the Barry Bonds or you're the whoever, you're great. Yeah. And you have to express how good that person is. We just have different talents at it. That's the gift my dad gave me on that communication. Now, if you put me in a round with that, I can talk to you really well. Sure. I can say, you know what? You're going to be all right, my friend. Yeah. And then after a while, they got it. Yeah. And yeah. D. Gordon and Yelich and... Was Ichiro Rimuto there too? And Ichiro. Yeah. Um, wow. They were, you know, Prado. I mean, they were some really some good hitters. Good guys, yeah. great hitters, and you know, we had a great relationship. I just wasn't there long enough. Yeah. Great for me because I'm home where I want to be, which yeah. is fantastic. And you had the experience. And I had the experience, yeah. and it was fun. And and if I had if, and, and if I had a chance to do it all over again, I would have done it the same way. I think it was really good because. My relationship with players got better. Yeah. My talking skills in the sport were as good as I thought they were. Uh -huh. And I can communicate things without intimidating or being aggressive and saying, disrespecting them as Major League Baseball players and understanding that there's, we're all just trying to get to the same goals in right. here. Right, right. Um, Sounds a little Jim Leland the, the, in there. Yeah, yeah the a school lot of, of baseball, I feel very, very confident to. Yeah. I can stand up in a class. I can talk to you. I don't intimidate you. I know how to improve you with, and, and giving you the skill sets of being better. Yeah. Now, tell me if you, if you did say this, because I read this, that the, your time in Miami as hitting coach, you said it was, if not the most rewarding, one of the most rewarding baseball experiences of your life. Yeah. Now, that might surprise some people after all yeah. that you've accomplished, but you found that to be so rewarding. Right. For the reasons you just shared with me. Yeah, because now, I was, like I said, I was so introverted, introverted and closed, and I've been so such a private person and such like a loner person. And I didn't have the great communication skills as an athlete, as, as, as an entertainer with baseball, like after the game, you know, talking with people, and I would always just dash away, you know, go home, do this, try to come back, and... I, I just, like I said, like my mom, the things, the gifts my mom gave me of try. You don't know how good you are. And I've learned that I have the great communication skills when it comes to baseball. Yep. When it comes to teaching kids baseball and to really inspire them or to build them up or to show them the right way and kick them in the butt when they need it. Yeah. I have that skill. Yeah. And so I stay in my lane. I just stay in that lane, and I don't go another one. But I'm trying. My daughter and my, my kids are trying to get me out. I said, Dad, go. I think since I've been out of baseball, I've been a lot better. Um, you think you're a little bit more relaxed? I think because it's not shoved at me. 
you know, okay. when you're working, when I'm at the ballpark, I'm just trying to heal my legs. I'm just trying to go to work. But when you have 30 reporters in your locker, by the time I take my shirt off, they're like, Barry, what do you think of this? That is not the time to bother anyone. And with us, it's just magnified. But yeah. I know you or anyone else said, boy, you come in my dressing room while I'm trying to get ready. You, you know what I mean? Yes. We all have that moment where of we course. need to. But in the sports world, you, you know, have to media do it on is the stage. only, you have yeah. to, even when you're in your dressing room, right. you have to be on stage. Right. And I really wasn't good at that. I didn't, I couldn't separate the two. My job, I don't have that mentality, that thought process yeah. in my head. Yeah. My head is I'm at work, leave me alone. Like I'm just programming myself yeah. all damn day. Yeah. What? What? Leave me alone. And that's what I, that's, I couldn't do two. I can't do both. And yeah. I, I was never good at that. And I don't blame the press. I know now that I'm retired. Tired. I don't. You're doing your job. You got families to feed. You got things to do. But it, at that time, I wasn't thinking like that. I was of like, course. why are you bothering me? Right, I know. And then it's like, you know, why are you saying nasty things about me? And then when you talk to me tomorrow, why? You yeah. know, I'm. Th I have other things to do. I have to play. I, I got to perform. You had I, way too much going on up in there. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I got you. You know, I just. But now, I can do it whenever I want to. Mm-hmm. And I'm learning, I'm taking my baby steps. That's why I do this. You know, I don't do interviews, right? I know. You don't do interviews. That's why I'm grateful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking these baby steps because my, like I said, my daughter and them are just like, you need dad. People don't know you, dad, but it's okay. You, you can tell them. Yeah. And do it at your own pace. At just your try. Own pace. And my mom's yeah. like, try, son. Yeah. And this is what I'm doing now. I'm actually really trying. But so people always ask me, does it bother you? No, because I can stay home now. There you go. I don't have to go yeah, outside. Yes, you can walk away. I can leave. <laughs> so now I like it. I have more fun. I stay longer than normal. Before I'd be like, okay, Renata, can I go? Can I leave? I'm stomping at my feet trying to get the hell up out of here. I still do at the beginning. Right. Make sure, you know, okay, let's make sure. Because, you know, these are baby steps. But then once I get in it, I'm okay. You relax. I just have, yeah, yeah, I relax. Because I'm just afraid. I'm kind of like. What am I saying? I or know. What am I going to do? Or I know. Am I going to say the right things? Or how is it going to be edited? Or Because, you know, I got, I, you're human. We're human. Yeah. And you get your feelings hurt. And I think mine got hurt a lot more. Not that thing. I know. Mm. That for somebody to come up to me, and I'm just a human being, a person. I'm just a baseball player. Just a person. And I'm trying to do the best I can out here yeah. that your money can buy. Yeah. And it's not going to be perfect. And I have someone that says, I want to do this wonderful piece on you. And next minute it's like, bonds, duh, duh. And I'm like, wait a minute, didn't we just have an earlier conversation about yeah. how wonderful this was going to be? Yeah. And then I got, duh, duh, duh. And I, I took it to heart. I, I, I really, 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 that physically, mentally hurt me. Yeah, and I'm sure it did. Then when I got to the point in my career where I could dictate it my own way, I was a brat. I got even. That's pretty much what, mm. that's how I sum it up. Okay. I said, okay, now you need to talk to me. You ain't talking to me because you're the one who said you were going to be nice to me. And then you weren't nice to me. So now you're never going to talk to me. Yeah. And so I went to the extreme because, like I said, that OCD in my head, yeah. that introvert loner person <laughs> said, okay. go straight to hell. It's okay. And then it, I, then I couldn't get out of it. You know, then I got caught in it. And then... I was like, okay, maybe if I, that's what I said, maybe if I can perform, I could ease it. I can ease it because I'm never going to say the right thing. I don't, I don't think like that. I, yeah. If it's red light, red light, green light, green light, I don't know that yellow light. Yeah. You know, my personality. Yeah. But if you tell me, Renell, go right, I just go right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And, yeah. And if you tell me go left, I just go left. Yeah. But some people can do that. Like, if you scrape your knee, people are like, oh, that, oh, that's such a bummer. Just, I'm like, put a band-aid on it. Can we, like, go? <laughs> you know, that's my thought process. Right, right. And so... That's who I am, but yeah. I don't mean anything by it. I'm not. Some people are great for that. You know, I watched Michael Jordan's and I watched Muhammad Ali's sure. my whole life. And I love them so much. And I would watch them 24 hours a day. But then I'm waiting for, like, myself, a Tiger Woods. He's a quiet person. Yeah. He doesn't really do a lot of things. Yeah. But do I dislike him anymore? Mm. I love him just as much. Yeah. This is just his personality. Yeah. But he's still a wonderful person. If you sit with the guy and you talk to him, you hang out, you're like... Dude, you're like really cool. Yeah. But so now when I tell these kids, I, I say, now that I got to see this, I tell them, hey, tell them who you are. And that's what I'm telling you now. I'm mm. telling you who I am. Yeah. And now you can love me or you can not love me. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you who I am. 
I'm not going to hang out with you all day because it's just not my character. <laughs> I'm going to stay for a little while and I'm going to dash away, right. but don't dislike me I for know. it. I you know. You know what I mean? I, I kind of get nervous or claustrophobic, but if I find that it's a safe environment and I don't feel threatened, then, then you're I, good. Then I'm good. I so, got it. But I have to fill it out first. Of course. So don't take it personal if I'm at a party and I'm gone in about two minutes. <laughs> They're like, well, you don't drink. It doesn't matter, though, but it's nice. I'll, I'll come back. Right, 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 <laughs> yeah, right. So, that's no. just, so I just tell people who I am now, and I don't. I I'm love not, it. It was hard to do. I'm sure. Yeah, that's not you in know, your comfort zone. No. But, I, I, again, I appreciate you doing that and sharing so much in this conversation because a lot of the young kids that, that look up to you, this is going to impact them in so many ways. Yeah. You have no idea how, how you're going to how your message is going to resonate and how you're going to reach a lot of a lot of young athletes that well, look up to so. you. So thank you for that. Now, one thing we didn't cover was, you know, the biggest of all, mm -hmm. you know, the all time home run record. <laughs> I don't even know where to start with that. But when you finally tied Babe Ruth, mm -hmm. what do you remember about that home run? Because I know at the at, at the end of the game, you said, whew, thank God that's over with or something like well, that. I was right? struggling against lefties at the time. Yeah, and I knew we had a left handed pitcher at that time. So I I figured it out on the field because I hit early. But Kim from the Diamondbacks, the side armor, mm -hmm. kills me. Mm. He was killing me. And I knew we were going to face them that next series. Right. And I knew I was going to see him. And I prepared for that guy for about a week. Because I, I figured I'm going to get 714 because I'm on the road. I'm, I'm, I haven't gone too many games without hitting it. And I didn't want to put where I had to do two at home because that might be a little bit harder. Look right? at you, student of the game so, again, I'm telling you. <laughs> I got to get this out of wow. the way. So I went to go hit extra. It worked out. Gosh. And then I knew if we were Diamondbacks and us, were, we were always this battle. Even in Arizona, we get these last innings. It just happened to work out. Even though we win so-and-so, but we were always battling. And I always got Kim. And he kept throwing this little sidearm thing. And so I practiced him, and I practiced him for a week. And I really kind of, like, walked him right into that pitch, and I just set it up for him, and I just said, there you go, and I just oh, see you. That's brilliant. That's yeah. so genius. <laughs> yeah, I, I love getting inside your mind and how you approach, mm -hmm. you know, hitting very – who would think that you would spend a week working on one pitcher? I mean, mm -hmm. that's genius to me. I spent a week on him. Your preparation and your attention to detail and, again, just a student of the game. That's – and that's mm -hmm. why so successful. Okay, so talk to me about talk to me about the emotion of, of chasing that record and, and um, you know breaking Hank Aaron's record. And did you feel pressure? Was, was there a lot of outside noise getting in your way? I mean, did it ever start to wear on you or weigh you down at any oh, point? Oh yeah, it, it, I believe all these things wear on everyone, but. We're focused people, so we can turn that switch on and off anytime we want. Well, you can. <laughs> well, there's a, I mean, all the great ones can. Yeah. All of us can. We can shut that switch off no matter That's what. That's amazing. It is. Um, we're focused. Like, if you, we have something to do, we're going to do it. Got a job um, to do, focus on it, get it done. And, like, my mom and my dad would always sit there and say, those problems you have off the field are still going to be there three hours from now, so mm. it depends how you want to spend your three hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I figured that out. And I've already gone through so much negativity in the sport already it really kind of like was not really yeah it was kind of like okay what else can go wrong I mean what else are they gonna say what else are they gonna do so I was like and I knew chasing the record the record could come next year it could come anytime it was there but at the moment everything was just falling into place boom 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 so I couldn't shut it down okay you know it was such a big thing and then you start thinking to yourself I don't break this record this year. Do you think I'm going to listen to this again starting next year? You okay. know, the whole build up in this. You ready to get it over with. Yeah. yeah. So I was, um, I was ready. The situation worked out great because we were playing Washington. I knew they had a strong pitching staff to a point, but I knew they didn't have enough to where they could prevent me for three games unless they walked me. And so when Bassett was pitching, I was, you know, I, Topped a little bit, and his 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 slider curveball was pretty good at that moment. I don't know. Three two came, and I just I can like I said I don't read well at all, but I can sense what you're gonna do. I know exactly who you. I can tell you everything these people thought. She was kind of skeptical of me when I first came in because I tapped <laughs> her right at the very beginning, and now she's starting to like me a little bit because it, it, the the thing is, am I correct or am I wrong? Thank you. And I don't even know this person in my life. I can sense things off a person and I can see how that vibe went, you know. 
Um, so you could sense that off of the opposing pitcher as well. So that 3-2, I just sense right there with just his demeanor. Oh. He's coming at me. Like his body language? It just changed. Oh, this and I just knew genius. exactly what was going to happen. Wow. And now it was just, I've seen that picture so many times. Yeah. That pattern so many times okay. throughout my career. Um, it was kind of simplified. And then again, you do it at home. Mm -hmm. in front of entertaining your your family yeah. of fans in the stadium. But there's a science to hitting though, Renell, and I don't, I don't, people just need to understand it. There is a science to it, and I did perfect it. Yeah. Um, I don't have 3,000 hits. Well, that's only because my career got short, and I would have had 3,000 hits. I probably would have had 800 home runs. There's there's things where my last yeah. year was just shortened. But a lot just of fun. walks, too, a lot of chicken dancing going on yeah, at, at but, the um, ballpark. I, I, there's a science to it, mm -hmm. and it does work. Yeah. And you can perfect it to your ability. That's the thing. That's the The key. science of it is not trying to perfect it to me. Yes. Because you may not be me. Yes. It's perfecting it to your ability. Customize it to your ability. And your ability can yeah. look really, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's yeah. just realizing who you are. Because you have so many different tools in a person that wants to be on this ladder and you're not there. But you can perfect your tools to be really, really good that make you look like you're on this ladder. You just need to perfect your tools and not try to do that. That comes with these tools. Mm -hmm. But when you're reaching for this, you know, if I can't slam dunk, I got to pass the ball. And eventually if I practice jumping, jumping, jumping within my realm and not pull out my back, yeah, yeah. I might jump one time and shock you and slam it, right? Right, right. We got to take these little baby steps. Right. We got to form ourselves. And I... I try to tell people, I took a little bit from Tony Gwynn, which I admire. Oh. I took a little bit from Willie. I took a little bit from Hank Aaron. I stole a little bit from Pete Rose. I took a little bit from Cal Ripken. I took a little bit from <laughs> this guy and this guy, and then I mastered mine the pictures. Yeah, you customized it to Barry Bonds. And then I custom to what Barry Bonds is. All right, you hit 756. You're, you're at the home ballpark. Nikolai is there as he was so many mm. times, and... And your godfather, yeah. your, your dad is not here. Talk, mm -hmm. Just, if you can, put into words that moment of uh, crossing home plate and having your family there and, and thinking about your dad and everything. I mean, were you, were you like physically drained at the end of that? Were you just like exhausted? It was both, I kind of, kind of like everything. Yeah. You know, it, like I, it's hard to explain, it's like everything. Um, I don't have to hear from my kids saying, pitch to you, Daddy. Why ain't they pitching to you? That was good. Oh, that was so it good. It was great for, I did it at home. So the great parts was like, I did it at home. All the people, I got to hug my son. He was so happy. Oh. You know, my family was there, except my dad. And Willie, you know, was like, when Willie was there, it's like, am I in? Did I, did I do it for you? You know what I mean? It was like, all I wanted him to say was, you okay now? You know I what I mean? Now like, have that approval yeah, that you exactly, wanted as a little boy. Exactly. Yes. So it was that, and then he gave it to me. Yeah. And then when I went up to, and I was in tears for my dad, and I said, mm. you know, thank you. You know, that time when they gave me the microphone, and that wasn't the perfect time for me to take a <laughs> microphone either. Because <laughs> um, you have great, so though. many emotions going yeah. in it. It was great, you know, though, and, and we said, all felt all of that emotion with you, yeah. And I said, thank you to my dad was because he was the mastermind behind my career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, then from there, it was over for me. I was like, I was pretty much checked out, in a sense. Not overly checked out of the game. I still love the game, but sure. the, the level of where I wanted to play yeah. was, <laughs> I'm not going up there anymore. I'll, I can hit 28, 30 home runs in my sleep. I can do that. I don't care. If I can't do that, I'll walk away from baseball, rip my uniform off, and leave. I can hit 25 home runs and just on my GP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I figured, you know, I was – figured I'd just do that. But then I, I – I wasn't checked out on the team because I really wanted to get another left fielder there that could take my role and, and have that time to mentor him a little mm -hmm. bit. But we didn't have those. We didn't yeah. have that at the time. Yeah. And so, but I was, I was checked out, really, Renell. I wasn't. I my I couldn't turn that switch on to where I really wanted it. Yeah. In moments, yeah. You know, I couldn't play day games after night games anymore. My body was just wearing down of a little bit, and you know, I felt bad for the fans and stuff at times because as much as they really wanted me in those day games and stuff I just couldn't do it I yeah. physically just it wasn't mentally I could go out there but 
the energy level that you've set for yourself yeah. for so long, I refuse to touch what God gave me, that blessing on that field, if I wasn't mentally and physically there. I don't mind losing. I, I don't ever care about that because you're never a loser as long as you try. Yeah. I just don't want to be a quitter. Yeah. And at certain times, if you know, they would say, well, Barry, you think you can go out there? I'm like, no, I can't. Um, they're like, you sure? I'm like, no, I can't. And it wasn't that I physically just couldn't go do it. I was checked out in my brain and my you. body was just torn down. Like I could have got up and really fought through it like I did so many parts yeah. of my career. But I was checked out and I, I, I was like, it's over yeah. it's getting over yeah. and I needed to uh, accept that at that moment I knew I could play one more year yeah but and I wanted to really kind of I never got to retire never had that retirement right. never never got to do that for what I've done but whatever I just couldn't do it anymore you, I just you had to have been completely physically and mentally exhausted done. at that point I was done I mean you had done it all and you're you had put your body through so much for for a couple of decades mm -hmm. I, I totally totally get that yeah, I was just I was checked yeah. out I was good enough to look okay you know but you know when I was in left field and I would go to balls and I I could see myself losing a step you know to the ball I yeah. can feel it yeah you know and you can feel those things yeah I was like, were you okay I, with that, or did that mess with your head a little bit? Or? I knew how to position myself to cheat it. You know what I mean? I know how yeah. to position myself to get there and make it look good. I know how to, I knew how to position myself to let the ball go down the line, and I know you can only get a double, no matter if it took me six <laughs> weeks over there to get it. But it's a double anyway, and it looked good on paper. Right, right. But I didn't want you to beat me in the gap because I knew I couldn't run that far over there without right. pulling a hamstring right. and dying <laughs> and doing all that stuff. So I kind of like, you know, I knew the. The positions to sure. be in. I've seen the guys a yeah. thousand times. Yeah. Um, but I, it wasn't acceptable for me anymore. It wasn't. It if wasn't. If you couldn't acceptable. play at that high level, you right? Yeah, it's it not going to happen, right? Yeah. It was. It, it was the time for someone with the youth ability. Mm. Uh, and I, I really honestly couldn't see myself watching a 21 year old at my age thinking you know i had to go back in 2007 my hands like i might just do this one more time but was bought what was bothering me then was the fact of that i'm preventing a 21 year old oh. to start his career who has the physical ability and young enough time to play as long as i did to now step in and i'm going to sit here for another year or two and take this man, now he's going to be 22, 23, and take years off his, mm. off his time yeah. when he's ready. Yeah. And I couldn't live with myself like that. I knew I could do it one more year because I, there wasn't no one there. And I was like, who are we going to put out here? Because I'm not just going to walk away from my people. Right. And right. we ain't got no, this is Bonds, Willie Bonds. So somebody's <laughs> got to be out here to right. continue this the tradition. Legacy, yeah. yeah and so that's what I was thinking too. And I was trying to, I was almost selfish about it. You're not going to tell me who you're going to put out here. I got you. I mean, you, no one would say anything, but I'm not going to let, this has been a tradition for since 1958. Yeah. 58. Since you, people stepped in, it's been Bonds, Willie Bonds. And no way you guys are going to take that away and, Who's going to come here and keep this? That's you know? right. The and family so business. Back was, to the family business. I was being selfish and trying to hang on. Yeah. But at the same time, I was. You knew. I knew. Yeah. And I wasn't going to be like any. And it wasn't like, are you going to be like anyone else and so on and just like that and just hang on to something. I, I knew I had a little bit left in me. I could just do that. But I wasn't playing every day. And I'm like, if I can't play every day, I'm not going to cheat this kid. I'm yeah. not. I couldn't do it. It had nothing to do with the team. It had nothing to do, I would have. Probably in 2008, I probably would have lasted May. Oh. And I would have told them that I probably would have done it in spring training. Oh. I was already checked out in right. 07. Right. So I that. just wanted the opportunity to say my own goodbye and yeah. thank you in a yeah. way that should have been. Yeah. Um, and I think that. I don't even think I would have made it past spring training. Wow. Because I was already gone, and I was already looking for someone to, like Willie gave the torch to me, to give the blessings to right. another kid That's and right. say, yeah. here you go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Keep this tradition alive. Yeah. Keep us going. You yeah. know, I'm going to be sitting over there doing all this. and Being, being a cheerleader. Happy. I like being a fan now. You Do you? Yeah, it's kind of What do you like cool. about it? 
because <laughs> I I don't have to have the stress part of that exactly. of that in there, you know. Yeah. I mean, I still hear dumb stuff. I'm like, really, dude? Are you seriously? You <laughs> well, know, that's never gonna go no, away. No, <laughs> but it's like I admire athletes. Right now, I don't care what sport it is. Like, I'm into cycling, and I I love it. It's you know, I, it's done wonderful things for me because, like I say, I'm OCD. When I get it, and I'm gonna, yeah. So now I'm just like trying to get as skinny as I can because I want to be a fast uphill climber. Yeah. Anyway, at 53, <laughs> That's what do you all right. dream? But I'm dreaming. That's all right. And but I admire sports. Like I, I love the art of it. Mm -hmm. And and I you never know what it takes to, see, to play yeah, at a high level. Yeah. yeah. And I don't get mad. I listen to my friends like. Oh, Warriors, I said, okay, now you're going to say, okay, we're in whatever, or halfway through this year. I said, well, when the Warriors get to playoffs, what bandwagon are you going to jump on? I said, come on, dude. And then, like, with the Giants, they're like, my friends say, well, they they can't do this. You should put a uniform. I said, it's May. <laughs> dude, you're stressed right. out in May? Right. I mean, are you serious? Oh, my I, God. I'm like, I didn't even hear all this stuff when I was playing. I'm like, right. are you serious? You're yeah. my, one of my best friends, and you're talking like that? That's funny. I said, you know, I I worry August. That end of August, yeah. mid-August time is when you're not working on your cylinders by then. You ain't be working on yeah. your cylinders. If you at ain't all. hot in August, <laughs> it's just you got to be close enough to grab that tiger. Yeah. You know, it's like you yeah. just got to be in striking distance. You got to be that snake and let that rabbit just. And you just have to be in striking distance. You don't have to be there. But a championship is whichever team's hot at that moment. Exactly. You don't have to be the best team. We've seen that time and time, time again. again. I time mean, the Giants, their three years were not the best team on that field, but they clicked on all cylinders when that time came. Second half team, most of them, right? Best. Yeah. I've never seen anything like in my life. It's like, you know, the Braves won so many playoffs and then only won one World Series. That's right. That's right. You know, we always thought they had the best team, period. Yeah. You know, yeah. and they didn't they didn't win all they didn't yeah. win but one. And and then you have the Giants who didn't have the best team on the field and won three and got the key. And I try to tell people, you know, you can go back to Reggie Jackson, but I said, just tell me you can say Joe Carter, because you remember Joe Carter. Oh you yes, okay. that was great. Love that. I moment. said, Do you tell me go back at all the history of sports and name it, it how many of the superstars really won the games for you? It's always the unknown that's, that's the truth always won the game that's for the you truth. it's like all of a sudden like i remember mark uh was it lemke was it with the braves all of a sudden he's like bang 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 <laughs> killing us i'm like where did he come from we would get this guy out a thousand times over to the series next to me he's hitting 700 right. with four home runs in the playoffs that's against so us. true and so it's never it's that's never so always true. been the guy pitchers have a strong upper hand because they get more rest they get a little bit extra time yeah. which is good yeah um, we get those days off. Hitters are more rhythm type things. So mm -hmm. if we get out of rhythm and you give us days off in that shut down mode, they're used to that. Pitchers are used to being that shut down, exactly. get up, shut yeah. down. We're used to going day, 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 yeah. day, day. Once we got a rhythm, let's just keep it going. Yeah. So it's tough. But, you know, the, the big guys aren't going to beat you because they're the ones so that they true. shut down. That is so true. <laughs> well, as we wrap here, you are back in the organization yes. as a special advisor. Mm -hmm. I know you spent some time in spring training. Mm -hmm. And what kind of other things are you doing? I do whatever they ask me to do, whatever role they want. It's funny because all my friends go, what do you do? I said, <laughs> I listen now. <laughs> I didn't listen before. I didn't have to. I said, that's your office. It's my office. Right. I am the boss. But now I have a boss. Yes, you I said, do. it's weird saying I do have a boss now. <laughs> and I had one my whole career. But I, um, you know, anything the players want. And, and I, I go through all the coaches. So, I mean, the hitting coach, you know, I go through anything that they want me to do, watch films, uh, go down to the minor leagues, go to San Jose, go to Sacramento, nice. whatever they want me to do to actually help make presence, see if there's, you know, but I, you know, like I always get with the coaches so that we're always on the same page because, you know, you really don't want to teeter line that line because that's their job. That's their profession. You really don't want to do that. So yeah. I really make it clear that, you know, if I'm going to do something. I work with the hitting coach and I sit there and say, okay, this is what I see. What do you see? And then we both process it. And then he goes and he'll tell him, or sometimes I'll sit down there and I'll say, if you just tweak this, you might get a little bit better if you just do this. But it's things that we've already talked about. I'm, I'm only here to help, you know? I mean, if you, if you have people with our kind of IQ, why wouldn't you want them there to help? Yeah. I mean, if I could go sit in Bill Gates' office, if I had that kind of intelligence, <laughs> believe me, he would have a hard time getting rid of me. <laughs> It, you know, and that's like my godfather. I stuck to my godfather. Right. He was the best. Why aren't you, you know, I only have this for so long. And I, and I try to explain to these guys. Eventually, I'm not going to be able to see. I may not be able to hear. 
and there's going to be time I'm not going to be here. You better absorb all you can. If it doesn't work, it doesn't hurt you. It's free. Yes. You know yes, what I mean? Yes. If it, just grab it. If, yes. if there's something you think, if it doesn't work, throw in the garbage. That's right. You know, do you right. know how many darts my, me and my dad threw that I threw in the garbage because it didn't work, but eventually something's going to stick or something's going to click. You, I, I, you know, but the guys here, they utilize it. Yeah. You know? They well, do. it's awesome to have you back, and I know you can feel the love from the fans every time oh, you come back always, to the ballpark. Always. And you know, and, and thank you for this time. This has been an amazing conversation. I'm really grateful to you. And let me just ask you how the kids are doing because we watched the kids grow up before our very eyes, mm -hmm. and your kids, you have done a great job with those three kids of yours. How are yeah, they all doing? They're good. Nikolai will be 29, 29 years old. Good He's Lord. working for a startup company. And they both all work for me, which is great because my daughter works for me. She's my marketing managing. I don't really do. I mean, That's I have perfect, to say, though. yes, I do social media in a way, but I don't do it. My she daughter manages does, for I don't yeah. even. I don't even really look at it that much. I, I can't. Don't, I can't deal with it's that. It's for the stuff. young people. Exactly. I can't. Yeah. And so. <laughs> But she does all my foundation stuff. Oh, that's and, great. And I have other, other teams, but she's really, as she um, is uh, getting her business degree as well. She decided to go back to school and get her business degree as well. So good. Asia's 19. Oh, she my goes God. to Santa Clara. and She's an athlete. She actually wants to graduate in three years and be a lawyer. Well, excuse me. I said, three years? I said, where did you get it from? Because I definitely <laughs> didn't have it. <laughs> she goes, well, what did you do in school? I said, honey, they said you only have to get a 2.0. That's all I went <laughs> for. <laughs> you said, daddy's not the one you want to talk to. It's too many hours in that course. They are great kids. And let me just say, that's as big as an accomplishment as anything you did on the field to yeah. raise wonderful, smart, compassionate, yeah, good, talented kids. kids. They are a, yeah. a real tribute to you. That's, Thank you. That's wonderful. Thanks. Give Miss Pat my love. Oh, I will. Please do. I will. Look forward to seeing her at the I ballpark. Will. And just, I have a little something for you, by the way, before we, we wrap things you up You better here. get it for my mom, too, because you know she's going to say, how come Brunel didn't get me one? Well, so you might want to get two. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if she's going to want this. <laughs> I'm not even sure you're going to want it, but, oh, yeah. you know, we did, back in my KML days, hit the club on occasion. Oh, we did do that. We did hit, so, you know, and I know you're... Well, thank you're, you very much. Well, I appreciate this. You're a health nut now. You may not yeah, you know, use true. that like we did back in the club days, but oh, just go on I in open there. it here? Yeah, just go oh, on okay. in there. <laughs> Back in the club days. Back in the club said. days, we did hang out at the club a little bit. Yeah, you don't really uh, roll like that anymore, Mr. Avid Cycler and Mr. Fitness and everything. Oh, it says home yeah, run on it. That's cool. Isn't that cool? That's all right. I could put my um, recovery drink in here. There it is. I could sneak my little recovery drink in here and I can stick it in my back of my shirt when I'm riding. Boom. And people be thinking I'm drinking. I'll be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, so there is a, I always have a secret. And they're like, you got to be like, nah, this is my gin and juice. Ah! I don't know about. You know, I'll make up a story. There we go. You know, I'll make up, and I might keep these out and like, you know, you got to tap it a little bit. You know, I got to, I got to tap it off a little bit, yo. But I can put my, my recovery drinks in here. That's so awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. That. It's just a small token of my appreciation. And so uh, all just, my Thank you so much for this. This has been oh, awesome. No, this is great. Thank now. you. Thank you for having me. Yes. This is a beautiful place out here. Too. Isn't it great? It's a really great stage here. Isn't it great? Yeah, this is really pretty. Well, again, I can't thank you enough. This has been an amazing conversation, and I'm so grateful to you. And, and just thank you for joining me. I know the fans are going to appreciate this. And thank thanks to Silver Oak for having us. Love you, Renelle. I love you more. There you go. Cheers. Cheers little to you. Sip. Little sippy sip. Ooh, that was tight. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> So good. Thank you. Thank you.